Today I'm going to guide you through everything that you need to do to make an absolutely delicious, crispy, tangy sourdough bread. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today we'll look at how you make artisan sourdough bread at home. It's not really difficult, but there are a few techniques that you need to learn that I'm going to show you today. First, you need an active sourdough starter. If you don't have one, uh, go have a look at my video uh, that I'm linking in the card above. Second, you'll need some tools. Your best friend when it comes to handling dough is uh, one of these puppies. It's a bench scraper. It'll help you handle the dough without touching it with your hands because of the hydration. It's going to stick to your fingers and it's much easier if you can just pull it away swiftly. You'll also need a Dutch oven. I like this one from Lodge made of cast iron. Uh, the good thing is that you can just flip it upside down and put the bread into this part instead of uh, having to dump it into the, to the deep pot. The last thing you need is a lawn. It's basically a plastic contraption uh, with a razor blade at the end. You're going to need that to be able to slash the dough so that you can decide where it will expand during baking. I've left links in the description for those and many other items that will help you uh, when you're baking sourdough. Heads up, those are affiliate links and if you buy anything, I will get some money to support the channel. The whole process of baking a sourdough bread takes about 24 hours from when you start until you have a finished baked bread. Most of that time is hands off though. The process is as follows. One, making the levain, where you make an offspring of your sourdough, which will die off uh, when you bake the bread. Two, auto lease the flour, where you mix the water and the flour in the recipe so that the flour can get hydrated and help develop strength and gluten in the dough. Three, Mixing the dough, where you mix the auto lease flour with the lavang and salt. Four, bulk fermentation, where you stretch and fold the dough to build more strength and develop the gluten. Five, pre-shaping, where you build a layer of gluten outside of the dough that will help keep the dough together during baking. Six, shaping, where you bring the bread to its final shape. This is also the last step in making sure you have a great looking bread. 7. Slashing the dough. This is where you decide where the bread will expand during baking. 8. Baking with steam. Where you help the dough get a proper rise in the oven by keeping the surface moist so it doesn't form a crust too soon. Sounds simple, right? The first time you bake a sourdough bread, you're going to be checking the recipe all the time. But you'll soon get the hang of it. Well, enough babble. Let's get started. The written recipe, the ingredients, and the amounts are linked in the description. First, we build the lavan by combining 50 grams of starter, 50 grams of bread flour, and 50 grams of whole grain wheat flour, and 100 grams of water. As you can see here, I'm combining 51 grams of everything. As long as you keep the measurements the same, the hydration will stay the same. We're making more lavan than we need, so that we have enough when we're mixing the dough. Mix it very well and put an elastic band around the container so you can monitor the growth. Put it somewhere warm. I'm uh, maturing mine in my proofer set to 28 degrees Celsius, which is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. When the lavan has grown to about 175%, you need to auto-lease your flour. Auto-lease means self-mixing in Latin and consists of mixing just the flour and the water in the recipe so that all the flour is hydrated. This will help with the development of gluten in the dough, which is paramount when it comes to baking good bread. So we're mixing 686 grams of bread flour, 152 grams of whole grain wheat flour, and 509 grams of water. We're reserving 50 grams of water to dissolve the salt in in the mixing stage later. Mix the flour and water thoroughly. Don't actually knead it, but just make sure all the flour is hydrated. Put away with a damp dish towel over top until the mixing stage. When the lavan has grown to double size, it's time to mix the dough. 
We'll mix the auto lease dough with 185 grams of the levain, 19 grams of salt, and the remaining 50 grams of water. Press your fingers through the dough and stretch it in over itself until everything has been completely mixed in very thoroughly. Leave the dough to rest for 30 minutes. When the 30 minutes are up, we'll do our first batch of stretch and folds. First, wet your hands, lift up the side of your dough the furthest away from you and stretch it as far as it'll go and fold the dough in over itself. Turn the bowl around and repeat. Then turn the bowl a quarter turn and do another stretch and fold. Last, turn the bowl around again and do the last stretch and fold. Uh, as you can tell, the dough is very shaggy still. The gluten development isn't far, so the dough isn't holding together well. Leave it to rest for 30 minutes and proceed to the second stretch and fold. Do exactly as before, but notice how the dough has developed and is much more cohesive. Leave to rest for another 30 minutes. Once uh, those are over, wet your hands and go on to the third stretch and fold. We do it the exact same way as we did before. Notice here how the dough looks much more stretchy and cohesive at this point. At the end of the last stretch and fold, we'll do a window pane test. Grab a part of the dough with your two fingers and try to stretch it slowly. If you can make a thin membrane, that means the dough has a very good gluten development. If it doesn't at this point, you should try and do more stretches and folds. Once the dough passes the window pane test, leave it to rest for two and a half hours. While waiting for the dough to ferment, you can flour your bannetons. I spritz them lightly with water and sprinkle them with rice flour. The reason we use rice flour is because it contains no gluten, which means that when you put the dough into the banneton, the rice flour won't get absorbed uh, by the dough and stick to the banneton. You can also use a bowl lined with a dish towel if you don't have a banneton. Once the bulk is over, we'll divide the dough into two pieces of dough that will become our breads. Take one dough piece and start by folding the dough in over itself, much like a stretch and fold. This starts to build a gluten membrane on the top of the dough, which is now facing down towards the table. In a swift and decisive motion, flip over the dough and start pulling the dough forward on the table with the bench scraper. Use your other hand to guide the dough. You can flour this hand if it helps you to not stick to the dough. To release the bench scraper, you should pull away from the dough quickly. Keep the dough going until you have a pretty taut ball. Then we do the same thing to the other piece of dough. Leave them to rest for 20 minutes under a wet dish cloth. Now it's time to do the final shaping. You basically just repeat what you did in the pre-shape. Notice how the dough wants to stick together in a ball now. When you have a taut ball, flip the dough into the banneton so that the taut side is facing downwards. Sprinkle the dough with rice flour and continue with the other ball. Put them both in a plastic bag and put them straight into the fridge to retard overnight. The next day when you're ready to bake, put in your combo cooker and heat the oven to 260 degrees. That's about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. When the oven and the combo cooker is warm, take a banneton from the fridge, remove the plastic, sprinkle with rice flour and put a piece of parchment paper on your peel. Put it over the top of your banneton and invert it so that the dough falls onto the peel. Grab your lam and score the dough. Here I'm being a bit hesitant about the cut, although it worked fine. You should try and just use one long swift cut. That's a learning experience, I guess. Put it in the oven in the combo cooker and put on the lid. Bake for 20 minutes with the lid on. When the 20 minutes are up, remove the lid. This is always the place where you know if all your hard work paid off and the bread got the oven spring you want. This loaf looks wonderful. Reduce the heat to 230 degrees Celsius, about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake for another 25 to 30 minutes until the crust is hard, dark, and crunchy. Take it out of the oven and turn the heat up to 260 slash 500 again. When the oven is hot, score the bread. Put in the oven for 20 minutes with the lid. Remove the lid, bake for another 25 to 30 minutes at 230 slash 450 and take it out of the oven. That's it. You made awesome artisan sourdough bread. Now you know how to make an artisan sourdough loaf of bread. It's not really that difficult, but it does require a lot of steps. I recommend you go read my article on the subject, which is linked in the description. It goes into much more detail. Now it's time for some pretty pictures. Are you ready?
watching. I hope you'll try and get your feet, well, actually hands wet in trying to make your own sourdough bread. It not only tastes great, but it's so satisfying to pull a thing of beauty out of your own oven. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. See you next week.